So China real estate policies and prospects. Again, my name is Joel Rothstein. I'm from Beijing, so I'm happy to be here and to be breathing the clean air of New York. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually the, the, the head of the real estate practice for my firm in Asia, and I've been there for 15 years. I've actually went to Asia just to work on that deal. One thing led to another, and all of a sudden I'm still there. But it's been really a fascinating journey to see all the changes and developments that have been going on in, in Asia and the real estate sector, particularly in China. So here's what I'd like to do today. I basically have three goals for my presentation today. First of all, I want to tell you about China's macro policies towards the real estate industry. What has happened over the last three or four years in China? What are all the different heating and cooling measures that have been going on and what's going to happen next? So that's the first goal of my presentation. The next thing I want to talk about is, in light of all these macro policies that have gone on, what does it mean for the foreign investor? What's the latest? What's, what's going on? What are we seeing amongst the foreign investment community in China? And then finally, the, the last topic that I want to talk about or thing that I want to describe to you in this presentation today is probably the hottest topic these days in the real estate industry in China, and that's outbound investment from China. The thing that strikes me the most about my time in China is how the flow of capital has changed so dramatically. When I first went to China, I would get calls from people in our New York office saying, you know, so-and-so is coming to New York. Can you introduce them to some developers in China? They want to build something in China. They want to do a joint venture in China. Now, the last two or three years, I still get the call from someone in New York, and instead they say, so-and-so is coming to Beijing. Uh, can you introduce them to the Sovereign Wealth Fund in China to see if they want to invest in their real estate fund? Uh, I have a project that I'm developing in New York. Do you know any good investors in China that might be interested? So it's very interesting to think about this, this sort of change in the flow of capital that we've seen in the last couple of years. So that's the goals of the presentation. And the agenda, again, we'll talk about the macro policies, foreign investment, and then outbound investment. So first of all, the macro policies, China's macro policies, what's been going on in the last three or four years in China's real estate industry, and the theme of it is cooling and heating. So that's what's been going on in the last couple of years. And I want to take you back now to the period, you know, post Lehman Brothers, and that's where the story basically begins of the, the, the real estate policies. So every, every, every policy begins with a problem, and I know what you're thinking. What does Starbucks coffee have to do with China's real estate policies? And I'll tell you with, with basically stories. So in our office building in China, like a lot of the modern office buildings in China, we have a Starbucks in the lobby. So a couple of years ago, the height of the market, the height of the real estate market in, in, in China, I'm there for having my morning coffee. Some guy comes over to me and says, you know, can I speak to you? You know, I, hello, where are you from? Can I speak with you? And so, you know, he had this shopping bag and goes to pull something out of the shopping bag. Well, it's not, you know, the latest bootleg DVDs. It's not postcards at Tiananmen Square. <laughs> Instead, what he pulls out of his shopping bag are, are two binders. One binder basically has uh, brochures of different real estate projects. And then the other binder basically has home improvement materials, you know, renovating your bathroom, your kitchen. And you basically then start to pitch me to see if I was interested in buying real estate projects in, in China and then renovating them. So <laughs> then, that, that made me think, you know, th this is an unusual place where you go to get your morning coffee and people are pitching you to buy real estate. So that to me sense there's something going on in the China market. What was happening? is that, you know, people wonder, you know, is there a bubble, was there a bubble? And there, I basically on this slide, I, I sort of list here all these different factors, things that were going on in the market, which really created this, this, this situation where there's a great deal of froth in the market. So we have the global financial crisis stimulus policies that flooded the market with liquidity. A lot of it found its way into fixed asset investment. We have urbanization with a lot of people talking about the rising wealth, lack of alternative investments. All these different factors came together to create a market that people thought was quite uh, frothy. So there was a policy response. <clears throat> and you know, when I'm thinking about the different phases over the last couple of years for China's real estate policies, I basically thought about three different phases. So the first phase that we have is really all about cooling the market, and that's pretty much the time period probably from like 2009 and 2011. And during that period, all the policies were always about cooling down the market, cooling down the market. Then, in phase two, China decided, well, maybe that's not the best idea. Real estate's such an important component of the, of the economy. We can't only have cooling, there also has to be heating. So we had this very unusual situation where we have policies simultaneously that are cooling and heating. So I'll talk about how you could possibly do that, but China <laughs> has been doing that. And then phase three, which is you know the, the period that we're going into now, 
I think it's going to be more of this cooling and heating, but I'll talk a little bit about what, what exactly that means in this next phase. Okay, phase one. This is that phase, you know, after the, after the global financial crisis, after all the liquidity has been flushed through the system, after there's all this froth in the market, China decides, let's cool the market. So I've listed on the screen here the measures that were put in place during this time period. And you can see that it's not one policy, but rather a series of policies that were enacted to try to cool the market. So things like putting limits on multiple residence purchases. Can, so can you imagine, you know, in the United States, the government saying, you know, you could only buy one apartment in New York, for example. So th that's an example. But in China, you can do those sort of things. So series of measures, <coughs> limited multiple residence purchases. They had stricter mortgage qualification requirements. They started a property tax pilot program in two cities. They limited bank financings to developers. They cracked down on the informal lending market, and they actually enforced the laws on the books. Um, there's actually many, many laws in China. We actually have someone in my office whose job is to monitor all the new laws that come out every day and then send us an email, things that might be of interest to our clients. And we get every day about 10 or 15 new laws or regulations. So there's so many laws that we have to have someone to actually sit through them every day. But many of them actually are not enforced or they're laxly enforced. So another thing to cool the market was actually to start enforcing some of the laws that were already there. So we had phase one, 2009, 2011, and it was actually effective. The, there's a survey that's done of the real estate uh, prices in China in about seven years or so cities, and every month it comes out. And that report was indicating, okay, the prices were either flat or going down in many cities. Well, China decided maybe there's, we need to have a different approach. And so that's when we entered the, the, this sort of phase two where we have this kind of dual policy going on, of both heating and cooling the market at the same time. And so, you know, the, the idea behind this policy is that China wants to discourage speculation you know, take, the, take out of the most expensive cities, the, reduce the, um, the, the bubble, but at the same time, China has various social policies that it wants to promote, such as affordable housing, uh, it wants to promote sort of stable economic development across different cities. So we have this sort of situation where you had simultaneously cooling and heating. So China says, well, we're not going to approve kind of speculative high-end residential projects, but we'll approve uh, a low-income housing project. We're not going to allow banks to lend you know, over units of a certain size. But on the other hand, banks will create incentives for first-time home buyers. So we had this kind of situation going on where you were both cooling and heating the market at the same time. The next phase, which is the one I think we're really entering now, is I think we're going to see more of the same. So we're going to have this official policy of cooling the market in certain areas, but also heating at the same time. And the watchwords, if you were to look at governmental policies that often come up, they talk about guiding healthy development and stabilization. So what China wants is they want to stabilize the market, they want to promote affordable housing, they want to you know, shift the, the, the development inland from the coast and so forth. So if I would have to summarize what's like the latest in terms of the, the general policy of China towards real estate, there's something that came out end of February. It was a notice of the state council on continuing to effectively regulate the real estate market. So I think this, this particular thing from the state council kind of summarizes what the policy is going to be over the next year or two in China. And I've listed up here basically what the different policies are, the key features of this new notice. And here again, it's a mixture of cooling and heating measures. So let's just go quickly through these. So the first one they're going to do is that local government uh, actually have to have uh, certain policies. So that each city has to announce its real estate market control target. So they have to say, you know, what the average price per unit will be. And, it, and this average price per unit shouldn't rise above this amount that they specify. And then for local governments that can't control their prices, uh, the official in charge will be held accountable, which actually is the word that's actually used in the notice, but I don't know what accountable actually means. Again, they're going to still doing this thing on the limits on the ownership of multiple re uh, of residences, so individual buyers can't buy more than one housing unit in certain major cities. People get around this. But, but still, it's, it's, a, it's a policy that's out there. This is perhaps one of the most uh, controversial aspects of the new policy, is to introduce a capital gains tax, which they previously did not have in China, on the sale of residential units. So that's quite a controversial one. Mortgage loan restrictions, again, they've had this one before, uh, reinforcing it and so forth. The last two are heating measures. So on the other hand, all these were cooling the market. But on the other hand, China wants to make available development land. So there are certain uh, policies that the government says that the local government should make land parcels available for development and increase supply. They look back after, you, can't, you have to make available each year 
this, the same average amount that you did in the prior five years. So China's saying, okay, we want to we increase supply. We want to impact the supply side by increasing the land available for development. And then finally, zoning and affordable housing. Uh, they want the local governments to fast track approvals for real estate projects that focus on small and medium sized residential units. So they want to promote affordable housing. And actually the goal for 2013 is 11 million affordable housing units. So that's quite an ambitious goal for, for the current year. So that's, so these policies up here is basically where we're going to be looking at, you know, the next year or two. It's going to be a mix of these measures, again, both cooling and heating the market at the same time. <coughs>